And uh, we're doing a different chapter. Yes, we are. There's chapter three. Three. Yeah, that figure. That's a whole other story. It's another story. This man gets hurt a lot. I do not. <laughs> Only when I do stuff. Kind of Mr. X Games. So this one is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we and <laughs> we um, we are talking about we're falling out of love. So this is an important chapter, right? It really is. Yeah, because it's uh, kind of like when things go upside down in your life and you just don't don't think you're getting from the other person what you need to get. They're not doing for you what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, you cease to do what you're uh, supposed to be doing for them. And just yeah, right? you know, on and on and on it goes, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then pretty soon you just, oh, we're just out of love. Um, but you open it, and I think I do too. Am I wrong? with um, uh, I just want to see if it is uh, I think I told a story no, you told I told a story happened. first but but then you went in there someplace and you said basically uh, being in love is all in your mind yeah. and I said that too mm -hmm. and uh, how you fall in love it, it, yeah it, you, you fall in love because of, of uh, something that you like something that you're thinking on something that you're uh, really something that you're consider, that, right? considering uh, over but if you're like me, again. I stalked him, so I was consumed by you. <laughs> I thought about you incessantly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared about that now, but, but at the time I kind of liked it. But See, back in the olden days, they didn't have the World Wide Web. Oh, I love the World Wide Web. <laughs> so when you wanted to stalk somebody, yeah, I had to stalk somebody. Actually, you know, accidentally show up, show up yeah. at the same place that yeah. they were going to be. Be there. <laughs> not, not pretty. <laughs> Why are you here? This is a men's locker room. You know? No, I didn't do that. Okay, wasn't well, that bad? But could have been. But staying in love is an important issue, right? I, we we people want that. People think yeah. they're going to. You know, I just went to a bridal shower yesterday, and it's a precious thing in love. Gonna get married. Mm -hmm. They're always gonna be in love. Yeah. Always gonna think the best about their spouse. Mm -hmm. Always they're gonna think about the best, best about them. All those other marriages that we've seen unravel, that's not gonna happen to us. Yeah. And then when it starts happening, people don't know what to do about no, it. Oh, no one. And there's hope and there's yeah. help. And that's what we are here with the book, The Marriage Mentor, to walk you through some ways, right. I know, yeah. to be, uh, to stay in love. Yeah. So, there's a, there's a simple thing to this because it really is all in your mind. Mm -hmm. It's really what you're thinking. I mean, the, the only reason why I start not loving you is because I think of the things that you don't measure up. The things, I mean, okay, let, let's go back a little bit. You're going to have to forgive me for this, but we're, let's go back to the crumbs. I mean, really? <laughs> that big a deal? A few crumbs <laughs> on the counter and she loses it? I mean... Who is this woman, right? Crazy. So it'd be very easy at that point to go, whack attack. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then about the time that I don't quite get my uh, socks in the hamper, maybe I miss by just a little bit. But I mean, close. It's right there. I mean, yeah, I hit the rim, uh, but it bounced out. Then maybe it's like, well, can you put your clothes in the hamper and you missed it again? And, and all of a sudden now I'm thinking, this woman is just nuts. I mean, she's just coming unglued on me. And, and I, it's one thing after another. <laughs> I'm going to try to defend myself. I was crazy. <laughs> well, it, you weren't crazy. I mean, it was, it was legitimate things. The things I should have been doing, but it wasn't that important to me. So it was like... She crazy. Why is she nuts? Mm -hmm. But at the time, I could have said, you know what? I married a wacky girl and she just turned out to be just a, a knucklehead and I got to do something to get away from this. Uh, I'll spend more, spend more time in the garage, uh, I'll spend time working on something or building something or doing something else, uh, kind of what we talked about already, but it's, it's that constant, now I'm thinking on all the negative stuff that she's doing and I'm not thinking on the positive. I mean, you go to Philippians 4, right? Uh, we use that all the time. And uh, the Bible tells us to whatsoever things are true and lovely and, and, and whatsoever things are right and good and of good report and, and, and think constantly on these things and let those be the things that mill over in your mind. You say, well, you're brainwashing yourself. 
Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Everything in life is brainwashing. Wash with the um, water of the word. That's what you're supposed to wash with. So if I'm washing with truth, then what's going to come out of me, what's going to spill out of me, is the result of truth and thinking on truth. And I so, think it's it's hard work to stay in love and to think on those things. Oh, yeah. People I mean, think it's just going to be like the movies and it's just going to come well, naturally. Well, because your flesh, your flesh wants you to go, oh man, you're not being treated right. Oh man, they're, you know, that, that chick is a whack attack, uh, you know, whatever. And then start thinking somebody else. Yeah, and then you start looking at that one going, oh man, the, the secretary has been spending extra looks at me. and Or that guy I went to high school with on the internet exactly. telling me I don't look so bad yeah. for my age. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Or I just look plain yeah, good. Yeah, That's yeah, 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 yeah. But, but whatever but it's it might be. opening that door sure. to the to And so now, I'll say in your mind, you, you've kind of put this one that you're supposed to be thinking right about, and you put that on hold, and you go over here, and you start thinking right. It's really wrong, but you're thinking right in your own mind. The things about that you like about them. What you like about them, and what you, right. and now you're being come endeared to them. You, you are going to, whatever you think on is going to be what you motivate yourself to. And so uh, it's kind of a simple chapter, chapter really. It really not a lot is. To it. There's not. And I like how in Philippians 4, when Paul says, whatever, think on whatever's good, right, on. Well, first, before he talks about that, he's telling them, be anxious for nothing. That's right. But in everything with prayer, Perhaps supplication, and thanksgiving, right. let your request be made known to God. And then the peace that surpasses all understanding will rule in your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on and says, think on those good things. And he says, what you've seen and heard and received in me, practice these things. It's something we have to practice. Oh, it's going, yeah, it's, it's something we it have to. Um, beyond just reading it one time and going, oh, well, this is going to be something that I, right. uh, that I, that makes part of my life. Or now I will the, if you will. Yeah, it's the practice of it. It's, uh, it, 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 it's really, your relationship with Christ is not in any way tied to your relationship with your wife, your spouse, if you're woman to your husband uh, it's not tied to that at all your relationship with Christ is tied to you and Christ alone and so for you to live the life that he's called you to uh, in your marriage uh, in your family in your home in your church in whatever it might be for you to live that life because it's the right thing to do before him becomes something that you practice because he calls you to that and, and that's the obedience that we're supposed to be showing forth and manifesting in our lives before the Lord. Um, and that's where the peace comes. And, and that's where the peace that's, comes. That's the thing. Paul's yeah. saying you're anxious, you're all bound up. And he's talking to these women in the church that were in conflict with one another. Well, and, he's but talking he's talk to the church. I mean, but yeah, but in that yeah. in chapter 4, he says, You and Syntyche, see to that you agree in the right. Lord. Right. And what happens when we have conflict, let's say, between a husband and wife, those women, Paul says, you guys used to work with me and, and helped me share the gospel, and now you're stuck because of this conflict. And that, that's what happens in marriages. And a lot of times, Christian marriages, you can't even get past where you're stuck in your conflict here to really be effective servants of the Lord in a way that is honoring to him. That's not just doing it out of duty because it's expected of us, but really well, that's letting what, God it do. That's it what through. happens is you yeah. don't do it out of desire and love for him. You do it out of obligation. You do it because it's expected of us. You do it, and, and that's not a happy Christian life. No, that's just and miserable. it will not draw your kids to Christ. Oh, that's never. That that whole loving Christ and doing what's what what he calls us to do. And making that a priority of our life is what's going to bring that joy and that peace. And it really, ha it really works. It's not something that that you have to manufacture. It's not something that you have to uh, really just make yourself excited about, right? I mean, it, it, it's not going to a, a rally about Jesus and and getting yourself pumped up on Jesus. Because the reality is, without the without the Word of God, without the Word of Christ, without uh, he, pressing into that relationship with him, uh, your feelings are going to be fleeting anyway. You're not going to have that real emotion of loving Christ and wanting to uh, just be obedient to him in all things. And so what's going to happen then is your your relationship with your wife is going to fade as well. Right. And well, and back to these mentors, the women that I invited to help me be the wife I had longed to be, they invited me to a Bible study. And it's interesting because the first study that they invited me to was the book of Philippians. Yeah. And I grew up knowing scripture, went to Christian schools, knew the Bible, 
but this study was five hours of homework a week. It was a lot, and I had I couldn't talk at the study if I didn't do my homework, which is my true spiritual motivation for doing the work. But as I began to truly study God's word and draw near to God, the Bible says, and he will draw near to you, as I was being washed with the water of the word, like Romans 12 says, to be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, as the word of God began to transform my thinking, I was able to even think with the mind of Christ. I was able to love with Christ's love, and it wasn't hard. You know, Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we make it hard because we try to do what God wants us to do when what he really asks us, Mark chapter 12, first and foremost, Jesus said chapter 12, 30 of Mark, is to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, with our whole being. And the second commandment is to love my neighbor as myself. See, I can't love this man properly unless I'm pressing in to love God properly. As I fall more in love with him through the word and through fellowshipping with others that also love him and we're sharing our, our what we're learning and studying together, then what spills out of you is Christ's selfless love for your spouse. And it's not hard because once I know I'm not walking in that kind of love with my husband, I know I'm not spending enough time in the word. And it truly is just that obvious of a litmus test. If I say, okay, it's time for me to pull back, um, to repent if I'm not thinking on what's right and good about you, and to just spend some time in the, in the Word, asking the Lord to recapture my heart and fall more in love with Christ. Right? So, some practical stuff. now. And you may be watching, and you or your husband, one of you might be going, okay, enough God talk. I don't want a relationship with Jesus. Uh, my wife has one, but I don't. Or my husband has one, but I don't. How come the wife has to have one, not the Well, I, I switched it. I said, well, yeah, I first. <laughs> first, yeah. yeah. Um, know this, that God will bless your marriage and your household uh, by simply one of you, if one of you are walking in the Spirit and loving Christ, God can bless your marriage in, in spite of one of you not being interested in spiritual things. Um, so I had some practical things that on page 57, actually 58 of this book that talks about just some practical way, actions that a wife could take just to show love to her husband. And there's some bullet points. When he talks to you, stop what you're doing and look at him. Laugh out loud at his jokes, even if they're so familiar that you know the punch line and you no longer take it by surprise. I think that's kind of something that wives lose. They lose laughter because they get so serious. I think it's in their 30s. Dr. Egrich was quoted in Love and Respect saying that women in their 30s, they call it the unfriendly years. And I think you're just tired and your hormones and you grow up with kids and so much on your plate that it's easy to become unfriendly to your husband or your family for that matter. So learning to just let yourself grace your husband with laughter. Don't talk to him like you're his mother. We talked about that before. Um, tell him what you admire about him often. Thank him for working to support your family. Be his girlfriend. That means just be with him. I, I love... The memory of when you were he used to remodel houses and I would go with you in the middle of the night when we lived in Texas to that Home Depot, mm -hmm. just the two of us and it was open all night long. It was open all night long. And they played the best seventies music and they would dim the lights at midnight and dim them back up and I remember dancing in the aisles with him at Home Depot. He's not gonna admit that he did that, but it was, right. it was super else. romantic. <laughs> Uh, and I could have said, no, I don't want to go to Home Depot with you at midnight, but I took advantage of the time that we could spend together. Find reasons to touch him, scratch his back, rub his neck, hold his hands, and then have sex with him. We'll talk more about that chapter 7, so stay tuned. <laughs> well, thinking properly, keeping in love is, is what, we're, what we're talking about, because that's... It's not the kind of world's kind of love that, you know, love, 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 the feeling of love. It's not really not a feeling of love. Uh, if you're looking for that feeling of love, that's fleeting, that comes, that goes. Sometimes you're just like, oh, she's so wonderful. Other times, she's my wife. Um, but you choose to love her. You choose, and, and this love that we're talking about is not, again, the feeling of, of amorous behavior or the feeling of, of, of just this overwhelming feeling of delight for her. But it's really... The kind of love that God's talking about in His Word is is talking about service. He's talking about 
a, a serving kind of love. It's like Christ loved us and gave his life for us. It wasn't like he had this warm, fuzzy feeling about us. He had this desire to serve us, to draw a man to himself, that he might be glorified and that we might bring, bring glory to him. So there was a service-oriented type of love, and that's what, we, that's what we're called to. So sometimes it's getting on track with how am I supposed to serve this woman? How am I supposed to uh, love her the way God would, would have me love her? So some of the things that you can do to kind of get back to that is, uh, number one, confess to God any bitterness, any unforgiveness, any anger, or any other areas of resentment that you may be embracing against your wife. And this is huge, right? Because Jesus, uh, the, well, John said, but God said, uh, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we know that that, that is always there. That is, that is etched in stone. He will forgive. He's willing to forgive. He wants to forgive. He wants to restore us in that relationship. And, and if it comes to bitterness, uh, unforgiveness, uh, that, that is such... I think we might talk about that later maybe a little bit. Um, that those are relationship killers for any relationship and um, oh just yeah the root of bitterness that just kind of there's a reason why it's called the root right it just it gets into the ground and it just spreads out and I mean it it attacks everything all your relationships all your other friends I mean all of a sudden you're this uh, you're this poison that enters into uh, even a room um, and I know that's strong and that's maybe harsh sounding but that's really what what bitterness does to us and if you're dealing anger. with bitterness ask the Lord if you're dealing with bitterness because a lot of times bitter people don't know they're bitter they don't even know it a lot of times bitter people have it's become so familiar to hold on to resentment that you think you deserve to hold on to because you've been wronged but the reality is it defiles you and yeah. so well, and everybody the, around you right so it's, sure. a, it's a defile it, it, it'll ruin the church of God yeah. um, exactly. you can you can destroy a church and three weeks with bitterness and your kids won't um, want to bring their friends home yeah and you won't uh, that doesn't do any good you confess those things to God the second thing was consider changing the focus of your thoughts uh, thinking right thoughts toward your wife is a first step toward staying in love and having God's peace in your marriage so ask God to help you develop the habit of thinking uh, lovingly toward your wife that's kind of what this whole thing is about I mean it's a simple message it's you become what you think um and so if you're thinking hateful thoughts, if you're thinking, what in the world am I doing? Why am I married to this woman? What is, uh, your, your, your outflow is going to be, and even your emotions are going to be reflected on what you're thinking on. Uh, you won't be loving toward her. You won't want to serve her. You won't want to move forward in a relationship with her. So uh, change the center of your thoughts. Think on things that are right, good, virtuous, trustworthy, of good report. Uh, put away the, the, the anxious feelings and, and uh, the God of peace will, will lift you up. Um, third thing, put away childish behaviors and desires. Uh, I guess I just told them to grow up, right? <laughs> yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't have fun because fun is not a matter of not growing up. Yeah. I mean, I mean if you're, but if you're driven by your wants, desires, expectation, then it's time to evaluate your maturity as a believer. And, and that's huge. I mean, I... I mean, we used to do a lot of things when I was a kid. I used to want to, there's a lot of things I wanted to do. I wanted to be on the water all the time. I wanted to be, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, and we did. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. But at some point, you had to put some of those things away, not because you can't do it anymore or don't want to do it anymore, but because other things come in. And, and I'm not saying don't do stuff with your family, but you gotta, you got to really be real with what's really stealing my time, taking my time, what am I putting too much time into, um, you know, is it some activity or some fun thing that I like to do, an entertainment that I like to give to myself. And maybe um, the root of it is to stay away from the wife that you're not And that could be too, on. that could be too. Uh, the last thing is remember the qualities that drew you to your wife in the first place. Uh, it's interesting how many times God tells us to go back and remind ourselves of what we have learned. Um, the words of the Apostle Peter, I, I had two thoughts here, but maybe we'll get back to them. Uh, who understood the value of a good reminder? Uh, I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken. That's Second Peter 3, 1 and 2. Um, I would say 
remember those things, play those things over in your mind, what drew you to your wife to begin with. Um, they may not always, you say, well, they, they those changed. things are changed. Yeah, yeah, they've changed, they're not there. Mm -hmm. But go back to what you know to be true. Uh, and, and just dwelling on the positive things. If she has changed, you know, because she's had kids, and, yeah. you know, dwelling on she's doing what she's doing for your family as opposed to she's not fun anymore. Right. You know, it's. Right. And you, you enter into different places in your life where, all right, fun is really. It's good to have fun in your relationship and laugh and, and, and be play together. Play together and, and invite your kids in that and, and let them be a part of that and see that you have a, a, a happy home. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about focusing on specific activities that you thought were fun. Or you think you deserve. Uh, that, that I think that's think. what happens. I deserve right. to have fun. Yeah, I, I and I resent. And I resent because we can't have but fun. We don't have the money. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times the money. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thinking on the right things is that. Yes, and then from a wife's perspective, I wrapped up by saying this: staying in love really is all in your mind. And this is to husbands. I realize over the years that I have not measured up to Steve's expectations, but knowing that he is committed. Let me cry. What? Oh, that's Don't sweet. Cry. Committed not to dwell on my shortcomings makes me feel loved and secure, and it causes me to love and trust him all the more. When I think of marriages that I want to emulate, there are two people that come to mind who have learned the secret of dis disciplining their minds to think what is ever good and right about their spouse. Don't you want to be that kind of couple? And I think that is the most important thing. It's not just looking at other couples and going, oh, I wish we were happy like them. They did the work. They've done the hard work of choosing to think what's best or forgiving quickly. You know, the Bible talks about not letting the sun go down on your anger. But it's just seriously just doing the hard work of battling against the enemy that wants to come and kill, steal, and destroy yeah, the love between the two of you. And don't you want your kids to grow up and say, I want a marriage like my mom and dad. I want to find a spouse like my mom or like my dad. I want to have joy and laughter in my home. And it really is possible to stay in love. It doesn't have to be like what everybody expects, that it just kind of becomes routine. Uh, staying in love is all in your mind, and it's possible. Read chapter three, hang out with us. If you haven't read it yet, maybe you should. <laughs> uh, staying in love is all in your mind. I love you. It's all in my mind. It's all in your mind, baby. <laughs>